Well, good morning, family. I trust that your Monday has started off great. Wow, what an amazing time we had yesterday at Word on the Street. Brother Robert preached a powerful word about the Holy Spirit. One of the things that I love about the Holy Spirit is, is the fact that he gives me strength. He gives me power beyond my own human ability and capacity. I read a troubling post on Facebook yesterday, and the post was uh, from a good friend of mine who, who've come to the place in his life where he said he's no longer interested in being married. And in his post, he indicated very simply that he's tired and that he just cannot continue. And tr truthfully, I can relate to coming to, to the end of myself. I can relate coming to the point to where I am out of gas and, and just powerless. And, and, and that's really something that all of us experience. We, we feel at times where we've labored, we've worked hard, we have invested, and we have done all that we could possibly do only to come to the point to where we feel like we can no longer continue. Well, the Bible teaches us that instead of growing weary and tired, that we can literally grow strong in faith. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, listen to these amazing words. He says, and let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. I, I like this particular passage of scripture, and I believe there are a few observations that we can make that can encourage us. If you are feeling a sense of, of weariness, a, a sense of being just tired, maybe you're at the place where you're tired of our current situation. You're tired of what's happening with the coronavirus. You're tired of, of not having life as normal as what we are accustomed to. You are tired of looking at uh, Zoom videos or videos like this. You're tired of your life being upended. Well, the Bible is very clear and it's given us some very powerful principles of how do we hold our course in the midst of challenging times. First thing that we notice is that he says, and let us not grow weary in well-doing. Well, what that tells me is that if the writer is instructing us not to grow weary, I think a few things I need to know. Number one, I don't have to grow weary. I have a choice. I can literally grow stronger in faith. In fact, in Romans chapter four, the Bible teaches that Abraham, the father of faith, as he waited on God to bring to pass a promise that God had made, literally, he did not grow weary, but he grew stronger. Now, how is that possible? It was because Abraham was convinced that what God said, he was able to bring to pass. And I love that. That's encouraging to me. And I believe that the only way to, that I don't grow weary in, in well-doing, weary in doing the right thing, is if I am convinced that God is faithful to his word. So often we begin to wonder in the waiting if what we are believing God for will come to pass. Have you ever waited on something so long to where you got to the point to where you were like, man, I don't even want this anymore. I am so sick and tired of waiting. Well, I believe that God uses waiting as a tool in the kingdom to build us. Yes, in Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible literally says, I believe it's verse 34 or 35, that it literally says that you have need of patience, that you literally need to learn how to wait. And in, it is in those moments of waiting that we learn how to trust God, that we learn and develop patience. 
I found that you can't read about patience or you can't study about patience. You can't have someone tell you about patience and then now you have it. It kind of like goes to that funny quote that says, Lord, please give me patience, but hurry up. God, I don't want to wait. None of us likes to wait. But I believe it is that it is in those moments of waiting and trusting and believing that we learn some things about God. I've been on this journey of, of pastoring now for seven years, going into my eighth year, Lord willing, pastoring. And the first two years were, were challenging to say the least, but over the last five years, I have learned some really profound uh, lessons on patience. Not having, things not working out as quickly as I think think that they should. And the, the, the one thing that I found consistent that God has encouraged me in is to know that the investment that I'm making is not in vain. Notice what the writer Paul says here to the church at Galatia. He says, here's the key to not grow weary in well-doing, to know and to have confidence that in due season, you will reap if you don't faint. That is a powerful imagery of, of time and season. If I had time, I would talk about the, the different elements of time and, and how you have kairos and you have chronos. Kairos is the kind of time that is uh, it's like a... It can happen like suddenly, like it's like a season type of thing where it's just you can move from one season to another at the uh, snap of a finger. And then there's Kronos or Kronos, Kairos and Kronos, uh, where that's chronological, where it's a predictable time. It's like a calendar is what we use like tomorrow. I know is Tuesday. Uh, it is July the 14th. Uh, July the 15th. So the thing that I'm trying to aim at here today is that, hey, it's important for me to know that what helps me to, what keeps me from growing weary in well-doing is a sense of expectation that what God promised is going to come to pass. You see, God's word, the Bible says in Isaiah 55, it says God's word shall go out and, re and it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish to that which it was sent, that which pleases God. And I love that. And I see the very a similar conviction in this passage of Scripture when he says, For in due season we shall reap. We will reap. In other words, it's just a matter of time. And Time is not always easy to wade through, wade through the waiting. But I want to encourage you on this. If you're waiting from, from God, waiting on something, I want to encourage you, set, reset your eyes on the things of God. When we are growing weary, it's because we've lost sight of what God has said. But I love the way the writer says it. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, it tells us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For in as much as we know, our labor is not in vain. I want you to know that that's my conviction. That over the last five years of pastoring this amazing church called Growing Faith, that the reassurance that God has given to me of all the ups and downs that we have experienced in our short time of existence, restarting ministry, moving to Pearland, and, and losing some people, some very valuable people, uh, picking up uh, valuable people. There have been plenty of transition and challenges, but one thing is for sure, God is with us. And that he says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. 
and the assurance of God's word. That's what we set our eyes on. And that's how we, instead of growing weary, we grow stronger. Because we know that the longer it takes, the closer we are to a breakthrough. And I believe that with you, that the longer it takes, the closer you are to your breakthrough. Don't quit, family. God is with you, and he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word today. And, and I pray, Father, that your people, God, that we would not get weary or tired in holding our course, but that, God, that we would set our gaze on you, that there is a harvest that we will reap. God, we will reap, God, as long as we don't quit. And, Lord, I thank you for the spirit of Jesus that's in us, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, quickens our mortal bodies. God, that same spirit that wouldn't quit, Lord, that same spirit that says that who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Lord, the same way Jesus fought through the temptation to give up, to turn back, Lord, he overcame it. And as a result of his victory, we have victory. And God, I thank you today for the victory in Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us in a daily devotional. It's not a perfect way to communicate and to connect, but it is what we have. And I'm thankful that I can remain connected with you in this challenging and uncertain times. But we know in all things that God is with us. As always, we want to encourage you with our mission that we are leading people searching for more into a thriving relationship with Jesus. Thank you, family. I love you. Talk to you soon. God bless you.